Hi, my name is Zainab Alshel and I'm a postdoc fellow in Marco Lodge's lab at the Martino Center for Biomedical Imaging in Massachusetts General Hospital and Harvard Medical School. I'm also the first author on our paper, Neuroimmune Signatures in Chronic Lower Back Pain Subtypes, published in Brain. Hi, my name is Paulina Knight. I'm a clinical research coordinator with the Loja Lab and was part of the team collecting data for this paper. Our lab specializes in simultaneous PET and MRI imaging using PBR28, a radio ligand for the translocator protein. This protein is upregulated in neuroinflammation, and we use it to explore the pathophysiology of different pain disorders. We've previously shown that low back pain patients have elevated brain PET signal, suggesting that neuroinflammation may play a role in back pain. In this paper, we explore neuroimmune signatures in patients with different clinical presentations of low back pain. Radicular low back pain, which is characterized by pain that radiates to the leg, and axial low back pain, which does not radiate. First, we compared the PET signal across groups. We found that radicular low back pain patients demonstrated elevated PET signal in the primary somatosensory cortex, which is the S1, compared to axial pain patients. And this is shown on the top row of this figure. Interestingly, this portion of the S1 overlapped the somatotopic representation of the back and leg in S1. We were able to determine the specific region using functional MRI and electrically stimulating the back and leg regions in each subject. And again, this is shown on the bottom right. We then focused on functional connectivity using the S1 region identified in the PET analysis as our seed. This showed that radicular low back pain patients had higher S1 to thalamus connectivity than axial patients, and this is shown on the bottom row of this figure. Next, we wanted to explore the relationship between the S1 PET signal and S1 thalamus connectivity, and we found that the higher the PET signal, the higher the S1 to thalamus connectivity. To explore the clinical significance of these two measures, we correlated them with the degree of nociplastic pain measured by fibromyalgia scores. Both measures, so the S1 PET signal, shown on the top, and the S1 to thalamus connectivity, shown on the bottom, were positively correlated with nociplastic pain. So this means the higher the nociplastic pain, for instance, the more the pain is widespread and accompanied by other symptoms, the higher the PET signal and functional connectivity. Finally, while S1 PET signal, S1 to thalamus connectivity, and nociplastic pain were cross-correlated, we found that nociplastic pain mediated the relationship between S1 to thalamus connectivity and S1 PET signal. This provides potential mechanistic insight into the relationship between these three variables. Our findings support the possible existence of neuroinflammatory signatures that are accompanied by neurophysiological changes and correlate with clinical presentation in chronic back pain patients. These signatures may provide information about variability in neuroimmune brain signals between patients that in the future could serve as targets for treatments for low back pain. We'd like to thank Marco Loja and all of the co-authors for their hard work on this paper, MGH Imaging for help creating this video abstract, the reviewers and editorial team of Brain for providing excellent feedback, and most of all to the patients who generously participated in this research.